Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hindu Explain series. I'm Kushagra Goel. So students, whenever we are a little late to upload the video, that is probably because we have to address far more topics for you all to know. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to open the newspaper and start reading it out in front of you. The idea of the series is to get qual qualified quantitative matter for you all to address your concerns for daily current affairs. That is why when we tell you that this series is your one stop for all current affairs, we actually mean it because we take a lot of pains to cover all the other information from other sources to finally verify what actually matters to you within the newspaper, right? It is just not what we see on the screen with regards to the newspaper. We are actually digging a little deeper to collect more knowledge that can be relevant for you all, okay? And that, therefore, we can get a little late some days. But rest assured, every day the series will always be in the bracket of 11 to 12 in the month of December. As it gets a little warmer, we'll be able to come with the series by 10 a.m. itself, okay? Now, with regards to doubts yesterday, one doubt a student had was with the winner's curse, okay? With regards to auctions. So, in auctions, so for example, IPL auctions that we see or any auction if you do at your house also. Every person who is bidding on an article probably thinks that this is the value of that article. For example, let's consider a mobile phone, right? At a thrift shop or a second hand store. So you think that this mobile is probably this much worth. Someone else, a B person thinks the mobile phone is 20,000 rupees worth. You think that it is 25,000 rupees worth. C thinks it is 15,000 rupees worth, right? So at the end of the auction, the winner who actually, so for example, if you become the winner and you got the mobile phone at 25,000 rupees, but later on you actually come to know that the mobile phone was 20,000 rupees worth only and not more. Then even though you have won the product at an auction, you are under a curse. Curse means something in a negative connotation, right? So when you win something and yet are f or feel defeated, that is when you are in a winner's curse. That is something that happens in auctions. Why does it happen in auctions? Because all of us who bid for an article have a personal input that we think is the value of the article, right? Or anything. So therefore, the differentiation of pricing that you believe may actually not come true. When it doesn't come true, that is when you face a winner's curse, okay? Now, another question similarly with regards to the spectrum policy and all, right? So, the new spectrum auctions have not yet taken place, okay? So, their policy is not something we can really discuss because it is, because it is not out yet, okay? What we can discuss uh, or I can tell you from yesterday is that India sets a base price, for example, for different auction spectrums, okay? And their companies bid, okay? All auction spectrums are also in circles. So, for example, there is circle for NCR Delhi, there is a circle for Rajasthan, there is a circle for K Karnataka, there is a circle for Northeast states. So, those are different circles. So, yesterday when the editorial pointed out to 22, 23 circles, that is what it means by, okay? Different companies had circles for different, different regions, right? That is why we, in normal parlance, we say, oh, the network of this company is better in this area. Oh, in Delhi, the network of so-and-so telecom company is poor. That could probably because of the circles that they own via auctions, okay? So that is all you need to know. Now, another doubt a lot of students keep asking is, what is the difference between democracy and republic? See, democracy is when there are a lot of people and they elect their representatives who govern on our behalf. The democracy system is where people possess all the power, right? Decision-making power. But not all the people, for example, India has a population of 130 crore people. Now, if all of them are going to the parliament, it will be impossible to even collect such large number of people at one place. So, we select our representatives who are members of parliament. So, when we are selecting those representatives, that is when we mean by democracy. What do I mean by republic? Republic is a connotation when it is said the head of the state, the person who is 
first amongst equal everybody is equal in democracy no one is above anyone okay but the first among equal which is the prime minister in our is if he is an elected person or the president who possesses the final power right so are they elected if they are elected then we call that country a republic the distinction you can draw fr from example of uk and india both are democracies parliamentary democracies but in the united kingdom the head of the state is the queen who is a monarch right but in india it is a president who is elected so that is where the differentiation lies okay now another question some students had was with the ibc today there is an editorial about ibc i will cover that there okay so let's dive in on the front page the new covid strain <clears throat> that has been discovered we talked about it yesterday that uh, the real scientific knowledge about the efficacy the mortality the rate of spread of this new strain is not yet proven but government has come out with special guidelines for people coming from united kingdom or who test positive for the new strain okay there on the left hand side you see a news the priest nun guilty in abhaya case in uh, a case that was pending since 1992 the judgment has come out for that okay that is it about it not much in it uh, other than that okay then on the front page uh, results for the ddc polls in jammu and kashmir are flowing in okay uh, so that is hearty because we had discussed when polling was going on above 50% people voted in the polls different people elected different uh, political parties national conference and the bharatiya janata party are the leading uh, parties in different regions of jammu and kashmir okay so that is it in that apart from that there is a news about the great indian bustard we will discuss this in a little bit more depth okay then there is news <coughs> yesterday i had told you farmers have started their own newsletter uh, during the protest it is known as trolley times okay but they have stated this is not the official mouthpiece of the farmer unions who are leading the protests okay so that distinction should be made see the reason why we don't discuss political news or whenever i tell you news from uh, which are related to politics in general i maintain a neutral stand as students who are from academic or who are preparing for an academic point of view the idea is that you have to stay away from the narratives of a or b or left and right okay you have to remain neutral and see things objectively because as lawyers as students will be preparing for application based questions in legal reasoning and most of the clat preparation uh, examination you have to remain neutral and see things from an objective point of view so if anyone is telling you or teaching you through a political perspective or telling you the narrative of one party or the other then they are actually not doing justice to the concept of education in general okay now on the uh, other national news there is delhi government begins contact tracing contact tracing is considered the most effective methodology of containing the virus okay now delhi uh, has been recording less than 1000 cases the number of cases in india have been reducing okay now uh, there are similar uh, reports with regards to for example you know uh, pollution in rivers nothing new comes out whenever there are these reports okay so it is not something that we have to keep in mind regarding yes day before yesterday i had told you that to, uh, yesterday was the centenary celebrations of the aligarh muslim university where prime minister modi was the chief guest he delivered a speech details about the speech plus uh, detail about amu is what we'll be discussing in a little bit more depth okay on <clears throat> apart from that there is not much from the national news okay possession of dead animal skin is not an offense under the mapa so this is maharashtra animal preservation act it says that see you are prohibited from slaughter purchase sale import export and possession of beef but if there is dead uh, carcasses in your uh, possession then that does not amount to a violation okay there is no doubt that skin is not covered under the provisions of mapa thus there is no prohibition for possession of skin of dead animals okay so distinction what the section says prohibits slaughter purchase sale import export possession okay possession of real meat 
but the coat has distinguished from the skin. Skin is used for different purposes than what the intention of the act is. The intention of the act is to prohibit consumption of beef and trade in beef meat, okay. But skin does not amount to meat. Skin is used for different purposes than what the intention of the legislation is, okay. So, intent of the act and the real application of it is what the court has distinguished, okay. So, remember the difference. On the editorial page, okay. On the editorial page, the left one, COVID-19 and the limits of political accountability. So, this is just a general analysis of how there is a limit to how much political leaders are really accountable for the COVID crisis. That despite so much political efforts in general, uh, someone doing better than the others, in general, the COVID-19 pandemic has come uh, better off than the intentions of the nations, okay. But what it also points out is that we as people are always looking for scapegoats. So, because we can't blame the disease, disease is not something we can control or see or demonize, humans tend to look for other scapegoats. So, for example, we'll point out mistakes at, let's say, uh, the neighbors who spread the disease on us or someone. So, if incomes have fallen, we'll try to find other scapegoats. But what this editorial is generally a political uh, analysis on a more philosophical level, okay? It's a good read, but not really relevant from our perspective of academic point of view. Not much knowledge can be gained out of it, okay? Then pandemic resilience parliamentary panels call for new law health post COVID-19 is a kernel for reform. What does this state? So yesterday we had discussed that the parliamentary standing committee headed by Anand Sharma, a member of the Congress party, they had come out with their report and suggested uh, amendments to the National Disaster Relief Management Act and other which were to control or in, introduce or make the public health sector better, okay. So, one of their main suggestion was to increase insurance cover and reduce ca uh, cash transactions in health sector to reduce private motives, okay. So, that is something that this editorial talks about uh, how in insurance sector there is a need for reforms in general. Not, not really something that is point of view, it's a policy uh, editorial and not an academic one, okay. So, we have to keep on making those distinctions. On the left hand side, delaying the inevitable restructuring of bank loans, this is the IBC article, okay. So, I will be talking th about this in a little bit more depth. Then on the left hand side, put the farm laws on, up, on hold, uphold farmer rights, okay. So, this is again on the farmer uh, protest and the analysis of farm laws, when we had talked about, we had said that, see, the intention of the, uh, and when we had discussed the facts and uh, separating from factoids of the MSP system, we had talked about how in general the pre previous system benefited small and middle farmers far more. This is from the analysis of the point of view of holding. When there is holding that is taking place, the third farm bill that we had talked about pointed on uh, removing of limits from the Essential Commodities Act, right, that you can hold. Now, that is something is what this editorial states is not beneficial either to the farmers or to the consumers because farmers will be forced to sell at a cheaper price because uh, uh, traders will hold it and then sell it at a higher price to the consumer. So, the benefit of the farm bill, which is supposed to be farmers, is not going to be the farmers, but actually traders in general, okay. So, that is what this is stating and why the limit in on essential commodities was placed in the first place, okay. On the left hand side of the OPED page is an article written by the ambassador of European Union, okay. And uh, five years since Paris, an opportunity to build back better. So, this is just to tell how, see, this all tells us how important the Paris Agreement is and climate change as a topic. That all the time it's part of general political narrative now. Climate change is something that is the center stage of political governance, policy making and different laws also. So, this is to state how Europe has pledged to reduce its carbon emissions by 55 percent to 1990s level by 2030 and to become carbon neutral by 2050, okay. So, these are goals they have stated enshrined how Europe and India can come together and build a better world, a more sustainable one for our children. Because see, the policy makers are people who are in their 60s, they have lived 
it is us and our children who will be the one who will be inhibiting the planet at a later point of time who will have to face the crisis of climate change if it is not addressed in a timely manner okay on the left hand side again uh, playing a game of brickmanship in nepal how this uh, <coughs> the communist party in nepal's communist party is now headed for a split and will increase instability in nepal at the time period when their economy is slowing down the covid-19 pandemic has not been addressed and addressing how much limit you can play with regards to pushing india versus china playing one side or the other to gain more benefits this is something for example uh, in past the vijayanagar empire had done in trying to control uh, the sultanates of south which were the five sultanates of golconda bijapur <coughs> bahamani kingdoms the vijayanagar empire ruler was finally defeated because he the these sultanates finally realized that he is playing one against another and eventually uh, the vijayanagar empire suffered okay similar to what nepal had been trying to do okay by trying to be cozy to china and then saying that how uh, releasing a new map calling uh, the real ayodhya in nepal it was trying to instigate india at the time it knew when china is having conflict with india so these are political limitations is what this editorial states of playing one uh, party over the other and leads to more instability in the country that is actually playing such politics okay so political narrative nothing really relevant for us we discussed the political system of nepal in brief yesterday not much apart from that is important okay then mayhem in nigeria on sunday i had talked about boko haram this is again saying the same thing that how the uh, rulers in nepal the government in nepal has not upheld the rule of law in general and that has led to the increase of violence and even within the government there are elements of boko haram who are sympathizers of boko haram and therefore they should subscribe to the rule of law that what is the law that everyone should be peacefully existent everyone should be treated equally that is not being upheld and that is why there are approximately 2 million people displaced internally uh, around 36000 people dead in nigeria because of this okay on the data point is a very interesting thing that you can note okay so three different surveys have been released they have cross verified the data of the open defection free on 150th anniversary of the mahatma gandhi's birthday prime minister modi had declared india as open defection free but these data point out that even though people may have toilets in their house th- only uh, approximately 70% people are only using them or those toilets have become dysfunctional so therefore that is something for politics uh, policy makers to look at you can note the see the graphs in general note down the names of the survey but that is not something that is going to come because it is mostly policy analysis on the open defection free what matters for us is what does open defection free means open defection free in rural india means that when everyone possesses a toilet at their houses and are using them and not defecting in the open areas okay <clears throat> then moving on to other national news and international news the same uh, on the most this page is mostly about national news there is update on the uh, population of leopards in india this was conducted along with the tiger uh, census report that came out in 2020 so uh, bec- uh, so detail of that is now there are total of 12852 leopards in india within that the western ghats host 3387 okay different states where more leopards are there and all is given in this article okay what you need to know is that this was in conjunction with the tiger uh, population survey okay now again on the left hand side is the speech of the prime minister at the aligarh muslim university we'll be talking about that uh then there is results about the ddc poll that we talked about okay and uh, apart from that <clears throat> a lot of former employees of the government of india civil servants have written to the prime minister's office and the government 
to consider review of the Central Vista project because we had talked about how in different committees the government is deducting, adding different programs, the cost of the project is increasing, uh, transplantation of trees that became in controversy, then Supreme Court had to stay the project in itself, stone link ceremony. So it is in a lot of conflict under that cloud they have asked for reconsideration. Okay, Then Prime Minister Modi along with the uh, former Prime Minister of Japan and Australia were given the Legion of Merit by Donald Trump and the American government. We'll be discussing about this in a little bit more depth, okay? Health data shows India does not need a two-child policy. What this means is that as per the National Family Health Survey, most of the states are already going below the conversion rate, okay? Despite not having such a policy, Indians in general are becoming more and more aware of why they should not have more than two children and therefore we don't need forced measures of contraceptives on the population, okay? Again, more and more data from the National Family Health Survey only, okay? Then, <clears throat> on the world news again, uh, WHO calls for va uh, variant. Then on the left hand side, China slams US over Tibet bill, South China Sea trespass. I'll discuss this in a little bit more depth too. Then again, uh, as I said, the national uh, Nepal's Communist Party heading for a split. That is something. Uh, then we had talked about how Morocco and Israel had formalized their diplomatic relations. Gerard Kushner, a family member of the Donald Trump, uh, of Donald Trump, the current incumbent US president, visited on the flight from Israel to Morocco. Okay, on the economic front, more suggestions for the budget, more disinvestment, which is the agency under which disinvestment is about to take place. It is the Shipping Corporation India Limited. Okay, it has been floated, not actually done yet. Okay, then uh, there is another news the Bharat Biotech Company, uh, which is producing the co vaccine. This is the vaccine and for which the ICMR is also working. Have collaborated with Oxygen, O C U G E N, a pharmaceutical company in the United States, to provide the vaccine to people outside India too. Okay, so <clears throat> the phase three trials of this vaccine are going on as of now. The details of which are not yet out. Okay, after this tie-up, they'll be able to do phase three trials in U.S. and then get emergency approval in U.S. too. Okay. On the sporting front, there is not much news for us, apart from one where uh, Lionel Messi has become the player with the highest number of goals at one club. So he has surpassed the record of uh, Pele from Brazil and has scored 645 goals for Barcelona and counting, okay? So that is one news, okay? Now, moving on to the in-depth analysis. So on the news from Tibet and South China, a, lot, a little bit of knowledge is required for you all, okay? So, Tibet was occupied by China. When China became free from colonial and the communist China, Mao Zedong uh, took over of China's power, Tibet was not a territory of China. It was free, okay? They took over Tibet in 1950-1951. Tibet has a system of two leaders, okay? One is Dalai Lama who is the religious head and the second is Panchen Lama who is the political head. This system has been going on since the 14th, 15th century, okay? What has, uh, who is the declared, uh, there is a government in exile for Tibet right now from 1959 when India under Prime Minister Nehru gave uh, refuge to the Tibetan people and the government in exile and the 14th Dalai Lama crossed over into and are living in Dharamshala, where the government in exile is, okay? Who heads the government in exile? The name is Sikyong Lozan Sangne, okay? That is the name. The F Dalai Lama currently is the 14th Dalai Lama who lives in Dharamshala, okay? Who is the pronounced Panchen Lama by the government in exile? He is Gendum Chokyoi Nima, okay? So these are leaders of the government in exile. China and the Communist Party do not recognize them, okay? They think, so this distinction you have to draw. The names that I am telling you, the government of China, the Communist Party does not recognize them. He is the Panchen Lama of Tibet, government in exile, Gendom Chokyoi Nima 
and the current Dalai Lama, the 14th Dalai Lama, who resides in Dharamshala. Okay. What has Donald Trump and U.S. done? They have passed a new law, which is Tibetan Policy and Support Act, under which they have recognized the government in exile, which resides in India, as the real government of Tibet, and have recognized Tibet to be a separate country, which has been controlled by China. Okay. So this is the act that U.S. has passed, under which now. U.S. wants to establish a consulate in Tibet, okay, which is to <clears throat> recognize the separate identity of Tibet as a nation, okay. Now that is something that China disapproves of. The Communist Party believes that Tibet has always been part of historically of China, and therefore, to recognize Tibet as a separate nation or the government in exile as the real government of Tibet is a <clears throat> interference with the sovereignty of China in general. Okay, so that is about this. These are the names that you need to know. This is the entire controversy about it. Okay, so Panjin Lama, Dalai Lama, who are they? What is Tibet when it was annexed? Okay, so that is where the controversy is. With South China Sea, U.S. passed its ship known as USS John S. McCain. Okay, trespassed into South China Sea. China claims entire control of the South China Sea. Ships passing through it, U.S. and other countries believe no, it is a free water and no country can claim possession over that sea in general. Okay, so that is the controversy. Nothing really has happened. The Tibet has not been liberalized or has gained freedom. Okay, so that is it about this news. Now on the IBC, what is IBC? It is Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code passed in 2016. Why was the IBC needed? And when? Uh, the former <coughs> finance minister who is no more sadly arun jaitley had introduced this in lok sabha he called it one of the biggest reforms for the indian economy why was it a big reform because it was linked to the twin balance sheet crisis what is the twin balance sheet crisis where companies have taken loans from the banks have not repaid it and also these companies have gone bankrupt okay so what does ibc do ibc is a mechanism for example, you own a business. Now you want to close the business. For the business, you took a loan. Okay. Now because you want to close the business, the bank will want its loan back, and you haven't paid for your loan because you your business did not become successful. Okay. So what will you do? You uh, the banks will go and apply for IBC redressal. They will. So when you give take a loan, you supply collateral, right? The collateral is land, or buildings, or property. Now, how do you actually gain money by selling off those assets, right? Now, to sell off those assets, the mechanism for it is IBC. When you sell off the assets, that is when you actually get back your capital, the money, because banks give money, but take collateral in another form, which is land, buildings, properties, all of that. But that is not real money, right? Banks need money back. So, how do you get your money back? Is through IBC, okay? How does that? It was a resolution of the NPAs. What happens? For example, Kingfisher Airline, Vijay Malya, Nirav Modi took loans from the banks, sub supplied collateral or did not supply collateral. The money is with these individuals. Now they have stated our business has become bankrupt. Banks still need their money back, right? So how do they do? They want to sell off those assets. What has IBC been done right now? IBC has been frozen. That for a year. You cannot initiate IBC proceedings because probably under because of COVID-19, companies may not be able to make profits as of now. Okay, but they might be able to pay back their loans at a later point of time. So what? So this is a simple mechanism of what IBC is. IBC is a mechanism for you to sell off your assets and get back your money. For example, I have this phone. The phone cost let's say ten thousand rupees, but by someone who for example, I owe you all 10,000 rupees. Okay. You want your money back and I'll tell you, oh, take my phone, but you actually need your money back. Right. Or for example, if there are multiple of you, you can't divide the phone and be like, oh, two pieces, you take three pieces, you take. Okay. That is not the point. So what you'll do, you'll take the asset, which is the collateral and sell it off. The money that you retrieve from it, that is where you'll divide your money. Right. You can't divide assets like this. So IBC is a mechanism for doing that. That is it. The relevance of the law is something very technical from a corporate law perspective. 
in general what you need to know from current affair point of view is what is the purpose of ibc it addresses the twin balance sheet crisis and reduces capital crunch uh, burden of banks okay or a resolution of the non performing assets that is it the purpose of ibc in general then there are more political uh, economic analysis of it read this editorial see things that you don't understand about it then we'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow in the doubt session okay so put, do read the editorial i have explained you the brief intro whatever you don't understand about it put it in the comment section i will be welcome to address them tomorrow okay moving on to the great indian bustard what has uh, what is the status of the great indian bustard the scientific species name of great indian bustard is eridoitis nigriceps okay that is the specific species name what is the status of great indian bustard a, one of the heaviest birds on planet and uh, supposed to ex have a territory from sindh in pakistan up till gujarat rajasthan and the grasslands of madhya pradesh okay but today the status of great indian bustard on the international uh, list is critically endangered and on the wildlife protection act 1972 it is under schedule 1 why is that the case because only 150 of such birds remain in wild today that is a sad state the most important reason of their number reduction is power lines power cables okay power cables colored uh, so these are big birds okay they can't see uh, or power cables in general are not really visible from the sky they are uh, they get camouflaged in the sky and their color is not prominent okay so birds are unable to sight them and therefore most of the birds pass away by getting stuck to power cables power cables are kept uh, are over the board in the region where these birds fly okay so that causes deaths to them now the solution for that is to make the power cables underground or below the ground but that is expensive so what have they uh, done they have come up with a new solution which is firefly bird diverter which will if you see the pictures from it there are light bulbs that are attached to these cables but the problem is during day time what will happen to this fireflies okay you can see the cables during the night but what will happen to the birds during day time so that is again problem because humans don't want to spend more to protect the environment because it doesn't concern them right if uh, birds are dying the cables are still over the ground and now more and more windmills and solar panels are being installed in the desert region of thar right and the grasslands of kutch which is the dry desert area <coughs> and madhya pradesh so there are more and more so uh, solar panels are being installed that will also reduce the number of area that these birds possess in the wild okay which makes their conservation even more difficult nevertheless this is the solution that they have come up with which is known as firefly bird diverter on overhead power cables okay the great indian bustard project conservation project is something the government of india is undertaking with the government of rajasthan to protect the birds because now they are mostly found in the state of rajasthan only great indian bustard is one species there are other kinds of bustards also that exist okay so remember the distinction uh, it is also the state bird of uh, state of rajasthan okay so that is the information you need to have now moving on to the next one the next one is the legion of merit what is legion of merit it is a award that is given by the government of united states to head of the states or commanders of forces okay of outside apart from us okay so it was instituted in 1942 which is in the backdrop of the second world war okay who has been given the award and what is the significance it has been given to three different countries heads of the state okay prime minister modi prime minister scott morrison of australia and prime minister ex prime minister shinzo abe all three of them along with the united states form the quad okay quad is a grouping that has been supposed to be a counter to china's influence in the world okay so that is something in backdrop of that all three leaders have been given okay previously 
six Indian uh, or naval commanders have been given the Legion of Merit. Okay, there are different categories. There is com uh, chief commander designation, there is commander designation, then there is officer designation, and then there is a general designation. This uh, Prime Minister Modi, along with the two Prime Ministers of Australia and Japan, have been given chief commander. Okay. There are six other Indians who have been given all from the armed forces. This is the first time the head of the state has been given the <coughs> Legion of Merit Award. Why has they been given the uh, Legion of Merit Award? The statement issued is, the President of United States of America conferred the highest decoration Legion of Merit degree chief commander to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on December 21. This award is in recognition of Prime Minister's steadfast leadership and vision of India's emergence as a global power, exemplary contribution made by him for advancement of India-US state strategic partnership and promoting global peace and prosperity. So, note the terms, okay? Emerge, uh, advancement of US relation to strategic partnership and global peace and prosperity. China is considered a threat to global peace and prosperity. And that is also the intention of Quad, okay? So, the three leaders of the Quad have been given the Legion of Merit, okay? So, that is the information. Now, lastly, for Aligarh Muslim University. Aligarh Muslim University, some facts about Aligarh Muslim University. Originally established as the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College in 1875 by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, okay? the first chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University. So, 1875, it is a college, okay? First under uh, Allahabad University, then becomes an independent university in 1920, okay? In 1920, when it becomes the uh, independent university, the first chancellor is a woman, Sultan Jahan Begum, who is the Begum of the princely state of Bhopal, okay? And when it is established, the first graduate of the university is Ishwar Prasad. And who is the first MA student of uh, uh, AMU? It is Amba Prasad, okay? The university has produced two Bharat Ratna alumni, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and our former pr uh, president Zakir Hussain, okay? The institution is an institution of national importance as per Schedule 7 of the Indian Constitution. This provision was moved by no other than B.R. Ambedkar himself. He read uh, Delhi University, Aligarh Muslim University and the Banaras Hindu University as the Institute of National Importance when he introduced the resolution for this, okay? Then what did Prime Minister Modi stated here is that Aligarh Muslim University is a microcosm of India itself and that politics can wait but de not development, that his government believes in benefit of all and his policies are for that and how Aligarh Muslim University is a representation of India. One distinction, Aligarh Muslim University is a minority institution, okay? Minority institution despite being government funded. So, that is a distinction. Nevertheless, the reason why we can call it and Prime Minister Modi stated it to be a micro cosm of India is because, see, despite being an institution catered for the minorities, the first graduate and the first MA student of the university were uh, not from the minority community itself, okay? So, these are facts for you all. A lot of other alumni of the university are very prominent individuals such as uh, President Hamid Ansari, the former Vice President Hamid Ansari, actors, uh, lyricists such as Javed Akhtar, a director Anubhav Sina, and a lot of other individuals. RF Mohammed Khan, who is the current governor of Kerala, is also an alumni of the AMU. Okay? So, therefore, 100 years of establishment of Aligarh Muslim University, the original college was established in 1875. The purpose was of this was to uh, provide modern uh, education to minority students because after 1857 revolt, there had been a gap uh, in the level of education provided to the minorities and the majority community. Never to bridge it, Sir Sayyam Ahmed Khan had established a modern institution based on it. Nevertheless, it had 
consideration of and contribution to the Indian freedom movement, which is something that Prime Minister Modi also stated. So that is it from me today. It is was long and a little late only because there was so much knowledge for you all to cover. Keep your pen tight with you. Note down all of this. Put your doubts in the comment section. I will be very happy to address all of them. So thank you so much from my side. If you liked our content and you appreciate the work that we are doing, give it a thumbs up. We really appreciate your uh, love for us. Thank you so much and stay tuned. Be consistent to the, uh, your preparation. Thank you.